Hi everyone, it's Kay Kaltoff. Welcome. We are going to do a stamp and chat with Kay today and we're going to do time for tea because I have a little project that I was working on and then I thought, well, as long as I'm decorating some tea tins, I might as well make a couple of cards. And so that is what I did and I did that last week. So let's go ahead and I'll uh, be sharing with you a, a couple of these cards and then teaching you how to make them as well as how to decorate these cute little copper tea tins that Stampin' Up! has in their catalog. So thank you everyone for joining me. We've got a couple of joiner ins already. Thank you. And you might be wondering what I'm going to do for the giveaway. So let me show you. On Wednesday, I'll go ahead and I'll pick a couple of winners and I'll send two of the cards that we're making today. Uh, to the two winners along with two yards of our Knight of Navy gingham ribbon and so we'll actually be using this ribbon on the card that we're going to make today so I'm excited to share that with you and I love this gingham ribbon it's really pretty in fact gingham is kind of in there's going to be some gingham showing up in our occasions catalog for spring too so I haven't actually worked with it yet, but I'm looking forward to working with it when I have a little downtime over Christmas. And so welcome, oh my goodness, there's already people sharing, hooray! And uh, one of the best ways to share is just share this video on your timeline, that way you'll know you'll be in the drawing, thank you very much. Or to make comments, let me know where you're watching from, uh, tell me what you like about the card or maybe what I could improve on it. And then, uh, you know, just kind of keep up the conversation and that way you are entered into the drawing for the giveaway. So let, I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and I'm going to flip the camera down and I'm going to show you some of the products that we're using along with a couple of cards that I got in the mail from a couple of my downline members and then I'll be showing you all the projects. And so we're going to do three projects. One is simple stamping. And then one is a stepped up simple stamping where we add a punch to it and then of course some layers and ribbon. And then we're going to do our more, um, I don't know, our, our 3D project which does involve the Big Shot machine because we'll be making some labels for those tins. So let me go ahead and flip this down. Thank you everyone for joining me. Um, so great to have you here. I've had uh, quite a few busy days the last few days and it's great to be home again and just enjoying life and getting kind of in the groove of the stamp room, which is my very favorite place to be. I'm so lucky because I have a job that I absolutely love and brings me such calmness and joy throughout my day. So thank you also for supporting me in that. This is part of the Tea Room product suite that you're seeing here and the time for tea can be purchased as a bundle in our uh, annual catalog from Stampin' Up! And this is what it looks like. It's got the cute little tea set here and then it also, um, this is a photopolymer stamp set by the way and then it has the spot of tea framelits. And one thing I want to point out to you with the framelits is that there's this cute little doily down here which is just adorable to set the little teacup on. And of course some of these do match up with images that are in the Time for Tea stamp set. So I really love it. And then here of course are a couple of the frame lengths. I have them on a magnet sheet. Um, and then a couple are missing because they're already on the Big Shot machine. So I'll set this aside because I also want to show you the beautiful paper that we're going to be using today. So every project that I'm using today uses the Frosted Floral Specialty Paper, which is in our 2018 Holiday Catalog. And it's so gorgeous. And I don't know why, but every time I used it, I sort of thought about tea. There's just some, some pieces in here that I think look really neat. Now Time for Tea Product Suite does have uh, coordinating paper that you can find in our annual catalog but I think this paper is so beautiful I just had to use it and so and I love this one with kind of the little ferns and thistle heads and and twigs and then look at this if that doesn't look like um, you know I just love the greens in there and I think that would look really nice on a tea card and then of course um, just some different colors that remind me of tea and tea leaves and so, and again, here's some mint macaron. 
It's a beautiful, beautiful set of paper, and it's a specialty paper. You'll notice as I went through it, there's kind of a shimmer to it, and it's, it's called the Frosted Floral Specialty Paper. So I'm sure some of you already have this, so you might want to keep it in mind for some tea cards. So before we get to the tea things, I'm going to share with you a couple of cards I got from Downline members. This card came all the way from Hawaii. I have two Downline in Hawaii. Um, they're both just wonderful people. I've gotten to meet Carol in person when I was there for the Stampin' Up! incentive trip, and I'm looking forward to meeting both of them, Carol and Gloria, when we go back to Hawaii next, let's see, it's 2020, and hopefully I'll earn that trip to Maui in 2020 and be able to go back to Hawaii. But this one was made by Gloria, and she sent it to me as a little Christmas card, and I think it's so pretty. It used that limited edition stamp set, Snow is Glistening, and then she had some retired paper that she paired up with it. And I just love it. I just think these little red rhinestones just accent the tree so beautifully. And why would you need more than three? Three just works so perfectly on this card. So absolutely a lovely card. And then another card from my downline is, and I have to tell you, I was so excited when I got this in the mail because look, it even had a beautiful um, homemade coordinating envelope. Now Stampin' Up! does carry an envelope punch board, so if you have a lot of designer series paper, it's kind of fun to uh, use it and create coordinating envelopes. And so this is the card that Carol made for me. Carol's all the way from Florida. That's what I love about Stamping Up. We have um, customers and downline from all over the United States, and it's so much fun. It's truly, truly a joy. But she used the Winter Woods bundle, and you'll notice um, she used some of the embossing, or it's not, it's not embossing paste. I don't think it's called embossing paste. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's like this shimmery paste that you can put onto things. Sprinkle it with glimmer, or there are some that you can just add glimmer to, um, or glitter, and it'll dry kind of hard, and it's so beautiful. So I'm gonna bring this up to the camera so you can really see it, because it is very gorgeous. I hope I'm holding it still enough for you to see this but it is so beautiful. I can't stop looking at it. It's just one of those cards that I don't want to put down because every time I look at it, I see something that's a little bit different and a little bit, I don't know, it's just so pretty. So anyway, I had to share those two cards with you. So thank you both to Gloria and to Carol. All right, so let's look at the cards we're going to make today. And this is our simple stamping card. All it uses is ink, the stamp set, and the very vanilla note cards. So I think you'll love making this. It's just kind of fun. It's sort of a way to challenge me to get out of my um, zone. Normally I make these more complicated cards, but Stampin' Up! has challenged us to do some simple stamping, and so I took Stampin' Up! on the challenge, and I think this is a beautifully stamped card, and I'm ex excited to share with you exactly how to do it, using only one ink pad and one stamp set. All right, and then the next card that we're going to make today is this one, which I um, initially made for a friend, and then I liked it so much. We actually met for tea at a local coffee shop. I liked it so much, I thought, you know what? This is going to go ahead and get me started off on creating something with that tea set, because this was the very first card I made with that tea set. And then that got me started down this whole chain. So um, this is the card I made for my friend Mary. And, and I'm going to make it for you today. And now the grand finale will be to show you how to decorate the tea tins. So here are three of them that I've already decorated. And I have to share with you that I wanted to make these so that when I looked at them in my cupboard, I wouldn't have to guess what I was grabbing. So this tea tin holds my black tea. This tea tin is holding my green tea. And then I have some oolong tea, which is kind of a, a blend that's sort of between black and green. So I have that one in here. And the tea tin that we're going to be making today is going to be holding my white tea. I know there's so many different kinds of tea. And then of course I have my herbal teas already stored in tins, but they're upstairs. But um, these are gonna stay downstairs in the, 
in the lower level of my home where I work and where I have a lot of company with Stampin' Up. And so anyway, these are the three tins that I made and then we'll make the fourth one on the video today. So let me get started with this very first card. So thank you so much everyone again for joining me. It's really great to have you here. So let me uh, grab all the supplies that we need and we'll get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to create this simple stamping card is very vanilla note cards and envelopes. And of course you can purchase these, they're already scored, all you have to do is fold them in half. I like to use a bone folder just to um, kind of recrease that so that we get a nice, a nice card, a card that will lie flat for us. And then um, again, it's a set of 20. So you get 20 note cards and 20 envelopes when you purchase this from Stampin' Up. So let me go ahead and show you what I like to do to, do, to make this card. Because you're going to notice that I created kind of a tablecloth right here. So how did I do that? What I did is I took one of these big post-it notes and I just opened this up and you know I, I don't I didn't really measure I just wanted about a third of it or so to be kind of like the table so I just took you know I love using the Stampin' Up! grid paper I'm not sure how many of you have it but it's a good investment because you can use these measure lines I don't even know if you realize this but I do this so automatically sometimes I forget to share but I just lined up the fold line of the card with this heavier line here in the middle so that I know the card is, is vertically straight. Well, of course, that makes it horizontally straight as well. So it makes it fairly easy for me to, um, whoops, I have to do it this direction, to go ahead and put my post-it note down. And this is going to create sort of where my tablecloth is going to be for this card. Then I'm going to take another post-it note and we're just going to set this over here on the left just like this. And what I'm doing is I'm doing two things. I'm creating my table space here for my teacup to sit on but then I'm also protecting the rest of the card from any stamping that I'm going to do. We are going to be doing some off stamping. So now let me grab the stamp and the ink. All of the cards today are going to use um, just one ink pad. So that makes it nice and simple. We're going to use Knight of Navy. So I've got it open. And then for the little tablecloth, we are going to do all of our stamping with just one stamp. So it's this stamp right here. I'm going to ink it up. And I am going to do um, some very deliberate stamping here. So what I'm trying to do is fill this all in just like this and I'm turning it every time that I stamp it and you can kind of see what I'm doing here I'm kind of trying to fill in this whole tablecloth with this particular image and then we're gonna go back in and fill in all of those different um, spaces that are sort of open with the second generation so I just did the first generation and now I'm going to do second generation, which means I stamp off before I do my stamping. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up here. So I'll try to do this quickly, but I think you kind of see how this is working. And you can see how it's all filling in. Then as I get along and I, I can kind of see some spaces where, you know, maybe I need to go in and just make one more little stamp to get it looking just perfect. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to set this aside and this is what that looks like. So my tablecloth is kind of done so now I can just remove the sticky notes here. And there we go. We've created a little place to put our teacup. Isn't that cute? I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, now, so let's do some more stamping here. So I'm going to um, grab the coffee cup and let me go ahead and ink that up. And what I'm going to do is just set that down here and I'm going to have to stand up so I can see what I'm doing.
So hopefully I got that placed properly. I don't want it floating above the table. It's kind of hard to do this when you're sort of off at an angle. But there we go. That's pretty close. It's a little floaty, but that's okay. And then the final thing that we need to do is just stamp our sentiments. So you fill my cup with happiness is what we're going to stamp next. So I'm just inking that up again with Knight of Navy. We're going to stamp this up here. Give it a little second or two for the ink to adhere to the card. And there we go. And our card is almost done. So the outside is done, but let's go ahead and do some stamping on the inside. So let me um, let me grab our our foliage here. So this is something we're going to stamp right here. This is sort of just the stems. Then we're going to take that piece where we made our tablecloth from, and we're going to finish that out. We're going to stamp off once and then stamp over the top of this stem image. So it looks like this, so that is done. And then we're going to do the same thing on the envelope. Oh, I have that envelope done. Let me grab an envelope that's not done. So we're gonna ink this up, stamp it right here. And one more stamp off and then we'll get going. So that will be right there. It's a little bit off, but that's okay. So there we go, we've got one card completed. So if you like this, give me a like. I sure helps when I know that people are watching and send me some hearts and like buttons. So thank you very much if you're enjoying this card. It's real easy to do and lots of fun. And now let's move on to the next card. And thank you for the likes, hooray! Okay, so the next card is this one right here and this is going to be the giveaway card so be sure you're um, letting me know where you're watching from or sharing this video so that you can be in the giveaway I'll do the giveaway on Wednesday so be sure to drop by my my uh, Facebook page stamping to share on Wednesday to find out if you're one of the winners all right so to create this card let me um, Actually, let me remove this because just in case the ink isn't quite dry. Here we go. We're going to start all fresh here. All right, so I've got to grab a bunch of things because this has quite a few supplies. So let me go ahead and we'll, we'll do some stamping on some scrap paper first. So I think this is a very elegant looking card and so because it's so elegant looking and something you probably can't see in person, but I wanted to give this some shimmer. So I used our shimmery white paper that Stampin' Up! sells and that is what I stamped. You know, it kind of coordinates really nice with the frosted floral paper. So I have a scrap piece of shimmery white and we're going to stamp our sentiment first. So again, I'm inking it up with some Knight of Navy, and we'll just stamp this over here. That looks good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a punch, and it's our two and a quarter inch circle punch. So we're just going to insert this in here, and once you have it lined up about where you think it looks good, just give that a punch out and then we can just set that aside. All right, so we've got that portion of it done. So now let me show you the rest of this card here. So we've got a piece of basic gray paper. This is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then again, I have some shimmery white paper for the inside panel. So this is four by five and a quarter. And then we're going to take a little panel to match the outside panel. So this is, again, that frosted floral specialty paper. This is one half inch by four inches. And I'm just gonna grab some snail here. And I just, <laughs> uh-oh, I just saw a piece of paper go flying across my room and I'm going to need it for my tea tin. Too bad I don't have my assistant with me today. I could make her run over and get it, but I'm, I'll have to take a break when it gets time to do the teak tins and go grab it. All right, 
All right, so that little strip is on. Then we're going to do our stamping on the inside panel. So the stamping on the inside panel, again, consists of this little um, floral piece. And we're just putting that down right here. And then we're going to grab that other piece of floral imagery. And we're going to stamp that off once. And then we're going to go ahead and put that right here. And then we have our inside panel complete, so we can go ahead and put that down. We'll put it down with a little bit of snail. And we'll set this in here. And give that a nice press. So there we go. We have that part of the card done. Now let's work on the outside of the card. So here we go. Here is the Frosted Floral Specialty Paper that we're using, and it's four by five and a quarter, and I am ready to put that on because there isn't a ribbon wrap that attaches to this panel, so we can just go ahead and use our snail and put this directly onto our card, which is what I will do. So thank you so much. I see Marilyn shared and Terry shared. Thank you guys for sharing. I truly appreciate it. And I'm always excited to see where you're watching from. It's always great to see you. Oh, and I have a downline member on here. Hi, Grace. Good to see you. Okay, so we've got that on. We put that on with some snail. Now we can set this aside. And the next thing that we're going to do is do a little stamping. So I have, again, some shimmery white paper. It's two and three-fourths by three and a half. And I am going to just set this paper down right here because I know that it's going to go about right here, this little punch out. But I don't want to put it down yet in case I would mess up what I'm stamping. So I'm going to be stamping the teacup now. So again, we're just using Knight of Navy ink. We're just keeping this nice and simple. And then we're going to stamp the teacup. And again, I better stand up while I do this. We're just stamping the teacup right above where that sentiment is going to go. Oops. And that turned out good. And then I think what we'll do is we'll put a little curl of vapor up here, you know, a little bit of steam. So to do that, and this also is in the stamp set, so let me show you what that looks like. We have a little piece that looks like this. And that is what I'm going to turn into a little curl of steam. So to do that, I'm going to take my Knight of Navy marker. And I'm just going to ink up just that little um, curl. Let's see, which, which way do I want it to go? Probably like this. So again, I'm just taking my marker, inking up that just half of this stamp. And then once it's inked up, just huff on it a little bit to re-moisten the ink. And then you're going to stamp that right above your, your little um, cup of tea. Just like that. So there's your little uh, steam going on up from the tea. And then we're going to do a little bit of coloring. So I have my dark soft suede Stampin' Blend right here. And I am going to just take the narrow end. Hello, Jean from Arizona. Thank you for joining me. It's good to see you here. But I'm going to take that narrow end, and I'm just going to go like this. And make it look like we've got a cup of tea here. I'm going to flip it over. Now, you don't want to get too close to the lines, but you just kind of want to let that... Uh, Stampin' Blend just sort of do its job. It eventually kind of um, fades out to everywhere that it needs to go. So just don't color too close to the lines and you should be fine. All right, so we've got our little teacup all ready to go. And now we're going to layer this onto a panel of Night of Navy. And this is three by four and a half. So let me flip this over. We'll use some snail again. 
and we're going to set this down right over the top of this Knight of Navy panel. I think, whoops, you know what? I can't see it. So if I can't see it, I'm pretty sure you can't see it. So let me, let me set this down here and then we'll try it again. Because I want to make sure I have the top, the right, and the left side pretty much even. There, that looks good. So let me flip that over and we'll burnish it down. Okay, now what we're going to do is grab this lovely um, Knight of Navy gingham ribbon. This will be my giveaway on Wednesday. And so let me go ahead and, and cut this here and we'll do a little wrap. So I'm just gonna wrap this around at the bottom and we'll go ahead and put that down with a little bit of scotch tape. And that looks pretty good. Okay, and now we can go ahead and put this on. So we're gonna do that with dimensionals. And so we just need one at the top and one towards the bottom here. And then we're going to set this so that this little, um, see where that there's this little line that goes across? We're going to try to put that right kind of about in the middle of that gingham ribbon. Actually, no, otherwise it's going to fall off the bottom here. Hold on. Okay, so it lines up with the top of the gingham ribbon in this pretty, in this card. There we go. That looks great. Doesn't it look good? Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a little bit uh, more dimensionals to the back here. So we'll do five of them. Flip that all off, whoops. There we go. Okay, we are ready to put this on our card. And because we have such a beautiful paper here, this frosted floral specialty paper, we kind of want to show it off. So we don't want to cover too much of it up. So we're going to keep it more to the right. And so what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I have about the same distance on the right as I do on the bottom. And then we'll just set this in here. And now you can see this beautiful... Um, this beautiful paper here in the background and then we're just going to accentuate it with another piece of ribbon so i'm going to cut a piece of of the gingham ribbon here and we're going to bring this in and we're just going to tie this off right here so hopefully this will work the first time that that card that i showed you initially i did a little fussing with that to get it to turn out but this one looks oh what do you know if the camera must be uh, on my side today because it turned out the first time. How about that? I think it's all of you watching. You're good luck for me. Okay, so there it is, our cute little card. And it is done. And that is just so cute. And then you're going to want to do a little stamping on your elephant. Uh, I almost said elephant. You're going to want to do a little bit of stamping on your envelope to coordinate with that card. So that's going to look like this. All right, so now we're off to the races here and we're going to work on our little tea containers. So let me again show you the ones that I did in advance. I just love these. And then just so that you can see how this works, I'm going to show you what the tea looks like on the inside. So you just take off the top and then I have my tea in a baggie. So it works out super great. And I know immediately that this is my oolong tea because it's got the soft suede. I know this is a green tea, my Moroccan mint, because of the green background. And this is a black tea because of the black background. So the tea that I'm going to work on right now is, is a white tea. So let me set these all aside and I'll bring the Big Shot machine into the picture. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna go across the room and grab the paper that went flying. So just a second.
This is the paper that took off on me when I was grabbing some other things off my desk. But this is what we're going to need when we wrap our tea tin. So this is, again, the Frosted Floral Specialty Paper, and it's 3 and 1 fourth by 11 and a half. So I think what we'll do, as long as I have it here and I don't want it flying away again, is I'm going to go ahead and wrap our tin first. So as you see, I've already put some uh, tear and tape on, and I'm just going to finish that up real quick the tear and tape so that you kind of see how this goes. So you're just going to set it down like this and then trim it off here. And on these bigger sides you're going to put two pieces of the tear and tape. And then on the smaller sides of the tin, you'll put just one piece. So now I've got this all ready to go and it's all ready for wrapping. So I start here just because I can see that this is kind of what I consider the back of the tin because this is where the seam comes together. So I'm going to take off just one of these uh, tear and tape adhesive strips and then I'm going to start with my um, three and one fourth by eleven and a half inch piece of paper here. So we'll start by setting this right here. You want to be pretty careful that you are getting this straight on this edge because that is going to be your line for going all the way around. Now it looks pretty good, so then you go ahead and you just press it down right there. Then you can go ahead and, and do the next one. Oops, it's kind of hard. It's hard. This is only because it's a video, folks. Okay, there we go. So then we're just going to press down that next segment. Then we'll do our side segment. And we'll press that one down. Oh, I see a couple of you love the second card. Thank you so much. That was a fun card to make. And that will be my giveaway for this particular video. All right. And two more, actually three more, and then we'll be done here. Press that down. We'll get this one done. But before I press this up and over, I want to add a little strip of tape right here. So I'm going to put this down right now while I'm thinking about it because once that gets up and over this last edge, then it's kind of hard to get that last strip on. So we're going to undo that one as well. All right, so you can see that we're at the last little bit here. So I've uncovered this strip on the side. We're going to bring it over. And then we're just going to keep it going and press it down, and we are done. So this is the back side, and this is the front side. And it's ready to go. I have my tea already in here. This is my white tea. I can put the top on. And then, as long as we're almost, you know, we're still working with the tea tin, I want to show you something else. Stampin' Up! as part of this collection has these Tea Room copper vinyl stickers. And one thing that's really cool that you really don't realize until you start working with them is that these line pieces, you can see there's, there's some pieces in here that are, that are longer. If you use two of them, it covers your tin perfectly. So I'm going to show you that. So you just grab it, and you can start on a side. And I just kind of try to aim for the middle of the side. And then I just bring it around to the front. And then it ends up at the side again, just like this. Then we'll grab a second one. And again, we'll just follow it all the way around now, this time to the back side. So just start it out right here on the side, bring it around the back, 
And ta-da! It fits absolutely 100% perfectly on this tin. Isn't that cool? I was so excited when I discovered that. I love that. Stampin' Up! thinks of everything. They really do put a lot of thought into their products before they put them out for us. So the, these little stickers are super cute, and I did use them on some of my tins. The Longevity blend that I have here um, is so pretty, and I used a little copper butterfly on it. And then this one, my black tea that I drink, has a cute little coppery flower on it. And then I used some of these cute little um, kind of branch things on my Moroccan mint. So this next one, I wanted to use some spoons because usually when you're drinking tea, you almost always have a spoon, or at least I do, because I add cream a lot of times to my tea. And so there's a couple, there's a couple of little spoons here. So I'm gonna take this out because I wanna be sure I use that. All right, now I'm gonna set this aside for a second and I'll bring the big shot into the picture because I wanna show you what we're cutting out. So I've got, because this is white tea now, I wanted to use a white scrap, and this is actually thick whisper white. Whoops, what do I have on my scrap? Let me flip that around. I've got some thick whisper white, and then I've got a scrap of gray granite, which is going to match that designer series paper. So I've got my Big Shot machine, I have my magnetic platform here, then I have my cut plate, then I have my little, um, tea time thinlets here that I've got over the top and then I'm just going to run this through the Big Shot machine. Oops, just like this. And here we go. So we can take this first one out and it is just, isn't that pretty? I just love it. And then here's the second one in the gray granite. And there we go. So cute. So let me go ahead and grab those spoons because I just think they're so adorable. And we're going to decorate this right off the bat. So I think we'll put a spoon here. And then we're going to put a little spoon on this one over here. And then I'm going to take my, my uh, 0.5 journaling pen from Stampin' Up! and I'm going to write down the name of this tea, which is Candy Apple. So it's Candy Apple White, so I can just write in Candy Apple, and that is going to be put right on here. So I'm going to do that with dimensionals. better use three otherwise it'll get a little tippy all right now where is my tea tin so I think what I want to make sure is I want to make sure that I have these on the same line because I'm going to be putting my um, attachment to the tea tin on this line here and now that I'm thinking about it I think I need to attach this to my tin before I put this on. So let me grab some Whisper White 1 8 inch ribbon and we are going to put this on first. So I'm just threading it through and then we're just going to tie it off. So I'll thread it through on this side. Cut this into more of an angle. If you have a nice sharp tip when you angle it off, then it's easier to thread through. There we go. And then you can, if you want to, you could use some glue dots or something to secure it down, but I didn't want to do that because I want to reuse these tins and I might want to make different labels and I didn't want to um, I didn't want that secured right on there, so I just tied it really nice and tight. So that's what I'm going to do for this one, too. So give myself some room here for air. 
and I'm going to just tie this in a bow. And I don't really care right now what it looks like. I'm just trying to get it all tied off nice and tight and in a bow. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tie it into a knot. There we go. And now I'll tie it into a bow. Because the knot kind of stabilizes it for me so I don't have to, you know, borrow somebody's finger because there's nobody's finger here to borrow. All right, so there we have a cute little bow, and then we can just trim that up to look nice and cute. And now we can take this and figure out right where we want it. That looks good. Then we'll take our little label, and we will center this in right over the top. That looks adorable. So we have our little tea tin done. Don't you guys love it? Okay, so maybe not everybody's into tea like I am, but I'm so excited to be able to put these in my cupboard and just know instantly by looking at it, whether I'm looking at a white label for my white tea or my green label for my green tea or my little brown label for my oolong or my black label for my black tea. I'm just so excited about this. So here are all my little tea tins. And then of course, we have on this side the little giveaway card that I'll be doing, which is um, just adorable. And of course, if you want to, you can get your name in the drawing. And just by sharing this video or by commenting where you're from, what you like about these cards or tins. Um, and then I'm gonna give away two yards of this really pretty gingham ribbon. And then we have our simple stamping card as well. So I showed you how to make a cute little tablecloth for a very simply stamped card. So that is over here on this side. So thank you so much everyone for being a part of this. You are truly um, a joy to me. I love having you in my Stamping to Share community. And um, I'll be putting this up on YouTube. It will also go up on my blog tomorrow. So have a great day everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.